I'm SB Kevin Smith. This is the IMDb Studio at Acura Festival Village. And look, it's the cast and crew of Promising Young Woman. Give it up for them, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> um, all right, kids, all three of you are Sundance vets at this point. You've all been up here. You had a short here, you've been in pictures here, and you had a picture here as well and stuff. What is it like to return to the festival? It's so nice. Right. I mean, I don't really know how to say it better than that. It's like the snow, everyone's incredibly attractive. Um, it's, it's the best, and it's a kind of, I guess, filmmaker's festival, so it's really friendly and collaborative, and yeah, it's gorgeous. All right, the friendly question's out of the way. This is a dark movie, man. I watched that trailer, and it looks awesome. It looks incredibly intense. And when I read that like you had done season two of Killing Eve, I was like, oh, well, that kind of makes sense. This is a question I have as a writer. Uh, you, have an, you, you have a job where you have to write a lot of stories like to tell one other story. Was this like an idea that you were like, ooh, this could be here, and you're like, I'm gonna save it for my own movie. Oh, that's really interesting. Actually, um, sometimes that does happen. Yeah. You have kind of like ideas and you think, oh, actually, no, it would go better somewhere else. But with this movie, actually, I, I started writing it before um, Killing Eve you season two. On. Yeah, so, so it, 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 it had been kind of percolating for a while, this movie, and then, um, yeah, so, so I think, yeah. Trailer's ingenious. Walk us through what the movie's for, for people that don't know. What the movie is, yeah. so it's a dark comedy revenge thriller in which Cassie, played by Carrie Mulligan, uh, lives a sort of double life and she goes to nightclubs at night and pretends to be drunk and see who sees who takes her home. And then it just gets funnier <laughs> <laughs> and darker from there. <laughs> It's a very hopeful movie about men, that's for damn sure. That's what I get from the It's trailer. hopeful about everyone. It is. Yeah, it really is. It's the whole thing of it is that like we're all in it. We've all done it, we're all in it. Like, let's look at it and talk about it and um and laugh at it a little bit and yeah. I awesome. Hope. Um let me ask you this. You're an amazing actress. It looked like based on the trailer that you don't play one part, you get to play a bunch of different parts within the one part. Is that accurate? Yeah, that was um that was exciting. Uh, part of it, yeah. She sort of has slightly different personas for her activity, and so and you can see in the trailer she goes out and she pretends to be drunk and sees who comes and picks her up. And each time she does it, there's sort of some she's sort of putting on a different persona. So there's lots of different dress up, which was fun. You read the script, are you like I'm instantly in, or is there a part of you where you're like, oh, I'm nervous? I was instantly in, but I was nervous. So it was both, and, I, and being nervous is often part of the appeal. So wanting to do it is often because I think. I don't know how to. Is that right? Like Glenn Close was just here talking about like she took a role because she was like, I didn't know anything about that uh, phenomenon in life and stuff. Yeah, I think playing something really close to yourself is, I mean, you know, I think you can identify with almost everyone, but I, I, I think the closer you are to yourself, the less interesting it is. I think the more exciting jobs are when you look at it and feel afraid of, and there are scenes that really worry you and there are things that, and that's when, if you have a really great director, you are led through it and you have amazing people to act with and you, you know. You feel safer. Mm -hmm. um, you uh, are, represent, you have to represent the entire male gender in this mm. movie. Yeah, as I do in life. <laughs> as always, is a role that you're well equipped for. Um, as a filmmaker yourself, how weird, thrilling, off-putting is it to be asked to be in somebody else's thing? Yeah, well, no, I mean, it was definitely, I was thumbing through all my acting offers and stuff, no. <laughs> I, I don't never get anything. Um, yeah, no, I mean, I just, like, my agent called me and was like, do you want to do a chemistry re with Carrie Mulligan? And I legitimately was like, yeah, that sounds... I'll humiliate myself, that that sounds like a fun, humiliating thing to do. And then I showed up and, well, I actually met Emerald before and she was just so nice and wonderful. And uh, the script was really great. And yeah, I was intimidated, very intimidated by the whole process. And, uh, but the good thing is that my character is sort of intimidated by uh, Carrie's character, so I could sort of act like it was intentional. But yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was, but it was great. The real thing is that like Emerald, is also an actor, so she has real sympathy for the sort of vulnerable position actors are put in front of a camera, so you just feel very taken care of, and you feel like you can fail. So, I, yeah, I failed. Yeah, I know I did it. <laughs> um, that's right, you are an actress as well. How many jobs do you have? Why don't you leave a few for the rest of us, man? Like, you're writing a series, you've written and directed a movie, you're in The Crown, uh, multitask? She's written a musical. What? What's the musical? It's a new version of Cinderella. Really? Yeah. <laughs> um, no, it's just amazing. You can't say no to these things. You can't say no to 
look at Kerry Mulligan's face. Look at Beau <laughs> Barton's face. You can't say no to these guys. And so, um, yeah, I just, I, I kind of, um, it's been amazing. It's been hard, of course. Like, it's been 24 hours. It seems like last, you've got a pretty damn busy yeah, schedule. Yeah, like, last two years. But I love working and, like, we're so lucky especially when you get to come to Sundance. So often you work so hard and, and things for whatever reason don't quite, they come out, don't come out the way you want them to. And then, so to kind of be able to come here with people that you admire so much and, and respect so much is just, it's so wonderful that the hard work just feels like nothing. Do you, um, in a world where it seems like you are doing a bunch, is it nice to do something like a movie that's like you're done in a couple months, whereas when you're doing Killing Eve, like how long does it take to write a season? So yeah, end-to-end -end Killing Eve, I guess, is kind of, nine months, 10 months, yeah, and, um, but, but it's a different thing, because that's kind of like a movie every week, you know, well, it's yeah. got its own, like, storylines, and um, mm. it's a different process. I think the thing, there's something very, very lovely about the being contained, having to tell one very specific, very taut story, and the kind of, like, being able to, like, apply pressure and ease it off, and, you know, it's, it's nice having those boundaries, I think. Mm. And what about when it comes to, like, The Crown, like, at this point, if you're killing it in all these other arenas, like, do you even go like, why am I bothering to act? I don't want to work for somebody else. I could work for myself. I could be in charge. <laughs> Whereas there's still a draw of like, oh no, I like being on somebody else's set too. I love it. I just love all of it. Like when I was little, I just dreamed about, you know, I went to Universal Studios and I saw it all and I just thought anything, I want to do anything to do with this. So like I can't, and, and work again, working with the people of The Crown is like, they're exceptional. And Josh O'Connor, who plays Charles, who I'm in most scenes with, is exquisitely brilliant. And so you want to just work with, in any capacity, you want to work with those people that you admire, I think. If they're up to Charles and Camilla now, how many seasons before they get to Megxit and Harry and Meghan, you think? Oh, my God, I don't know. <laughs> but we all want it, like, today, don't we? As it's happening, right. They're like, never mind the old story. What's going on right yeah. now? Um, I wanted to ask you about Eighth Grade. When I watched uh, it, was a beautiful movie, and, and uh, you've been told by the whole world and stuff, so you know by now. But as a, as a writer, I, was like, I watched the movie, and I was like, incredible. Uh, the woman who made this, like, clearly lived this experience. And then when I saw it was somebody completely different from the main character, I was blown away. How the hell do you get into the mind of a 13, 14 year old girl? Uh, well, well, truly like, um, I'm gonna tie it right back. Um, like this script, the script of Promising a Woman, if, there, if that's a trick, does the same thing. I read this script and was like, totally recognized myself in, in the men and actually thought initially I was like gonna read for the pretentious guy talking about Consider the Lobster, but um, uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think you just try to empathize with, with people and understand people and I uh, think it's m men's job to not only under recognize the specific experience of women that is specific to them, but also to see yourself in women and not just totally externalize and other them. Sorry, do you want to see yourself in women? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. One more thing on you before we move on. The, you come from the world of social media. Yeah. So you're one of those cats that aggregated from like uh, DIY to like you're in the space now. Like like me, I was a kid that was like, I, I want to be in the space. And I made a movie and I'm in the space. Yeah. How does it feel to be part of that, that space? You were in a world where like 250 million views for your videos mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So you've already had a massive audience. Yeah. What is it like to come into this world with like, hey, welcome to the movies, and they're like, yeah, I hope people see me here. Like, yeah, well, you've been seen by so many people. Yeah, the main thing is just like, it's really nice to collaborate with people. And I just I sort of came from the world of stand-up, where it's just very, very singular, and you're just looking to yourself, and you're writing for yourself about yourself. And it just, uh, yeah, it sort of drove me crazy. So it just, it's just great to work with people. Um, yeah, and you just try to con uh, concentrate on like what the thing is and not the medium of it or whatever, but uh, yeah, it's great. I mean, it's just like good to be around people and working with people. It externalizes like your anxieties and makes it a group effort and like, uh, yeah, it's less about you, which is exciting. Um, Carrie, you're an awards kind of kid. When people think of you, they're like, oh, she's a great actress. Is there, is there ever like, uh, is there a pressure to like, well, I gotta maintain that? Or are you ever like, oh, I just wanna do an Adam Sandler movie? 
Um, <laughs> I mean, I do, but I no. I, but that's I sort of I think that's a misconception because I actually haven't been in anything that's been nominated for a really. I start my sort of came in actually in Sundance with a film that then went through the whole awards thing, and and I think I do. I have lent towards more dramatic things, which get kind of dubbed as you know awards season. It comes out after September or whatever. But I've only ever been looking for characters that feel different from what I just did and feel like something that I'm sort of nervous about and excited and filmmakers I want to work with. Um, so I don't feel, a pr I haven't really ever felt any kind of pressure um, in terms of kind of curating any kind of pathway. It's just more been what has been the thing that I haven't already tried. Is uh, this the kind of movie that like, uh, you're gonna go on a date and then fight after the movie? I hope so. Who I mean, I that? wanted it to come out on Valentine's Day. <laughs> is it coming out on Valentine's no, Day? No, I wanted it to, sadly. It, it couldn't. But I think, you know, all the all the movies that I love are like that. I go in and I experience it and I come out and think, oh, well, we'll all be on the same page about what we just saw. And you often find your closest friends just don't agree with you on stuff. And mm. that's like, that's what you want. You want something to be thrilling and engaging, but also to like poke you in a way that makes you want to talk about it at least. You don't want to leave a movie and be like, okay, let's go to Chili's. Although you do, because you do want to, you do want to go to Chili's, but you want to talk in Chili's. Is that your take on all Americans? We're just waiting to go to Chili's at every no, moment? No, I'm waiting to go to Chili's. It's a good place, right? Yeah. I'm going to ask you some quick questions and let you guys get out of here, man. Uh, what's uh, When was the last time you ate at Chili's? No, I'm kidding. What's the, <laughs> what is the last show that you binged? For me, Succession. Obsessed. Very popular answer up here. Yeah, everyone's catching up with it. Nobody watches it in real time. And so I watched it when it happened. You guys are Johnny Come Lately. What about you? Um, cheer. <gasps> Have you seen that? No, but Mila Kunis just like talked about oh. it for two hours. She loved it so much. I finished it on the. I finished it on the plane on the way here, and I cried. That's what she said. Almost she was like, vocally she was plane, yeah. tell us about it. Oh, it's just incredible. It's set in Texas. It's about a college. There are all these incredible children who have been taken under the wing of this amazing woman called Monica. And they're, they're have you seen it? Oh, you've seen it? Halfway, halfway. Okay, so, and, well, I won't, well, I'm not going to spoil it anyway, but every episode is sort of the build up to these massive national championships and... It's just extraordinary. That's television. the one. Second vote for cheer, Bo. The Aaron Hernandez uh, murder documentary. It's so funny. He's a murderer. <laughs> <laughs> they documented it. Do you, uh, don't spoil it, but does it have a happy ending? Yes. <laughs> Very good. Uh, Jail is justice. <laughs> That's true. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for the cast and crew of Promising Young Woman.